We already had a look at Alphacool's Core Ocean T38 in 360mm and that one was really staying true to its name, Core, all core features, nothing fancy, nothing schmancy, just core performance at a core price. And with a tiny bit of ARGB, which did look kinda nice, but hey, it's 2023, if there is no ARGB in it, it's not a gamer product, right? Now meet the Core Ocean T38 in 420, the bigger brother, still coming with that 38mm thick radiator, but instead of those tiny little 120mm fans, this one comes with core 140mm fans spinning at up to 2000 rpm whilst pushing 92.3 CFM at up to 2.53 millimeters of H2O. We are going to have a fun time with this one. But before we crack a few jokes about it being sponsored by Febreze or Alphacool having found the tubes at the next gas station, let's have a look at the performance. Letting the fans run wild on our usual test bench pushing out 135 watts, the core ocean in 420 managed to keep the CPU you at 45.9 degrees C, a 1.2 degrees C improvement over the 360mm version. Looking at the whole picture, it's kinda interesting. Sure, it's at the top of the chart, it really is, with only 6 AIOs outperforming it, but it's still 4 degrees behind the closest and only, really only, other 420mm AIO we ever had. Another thing that seems quite odd to me is Arctix 280mm AIO, which outperformed it. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, but yeah. Um, we will need to investigate that once we have the new 300 watts set up. It's possible that because we are just pushing 135, you know, things are getting squished, but it's still weird. Moving on to Noise 2 performance. Here the 420mm upgrade over the 360 had quite a few selling points. From start to finish, the 420 version was always a tick less noisy than the 360, which is very, very good. However, it still landed behind almost every other 360mm AIO we have ever tested. Not even speaking about the Liquid Freezer 420, compared to that one, it, it, it's, it's astonishing. It, it should be quite ashamed. With the results out, just as I said in the 360mm version review, we are pushing only 135 watts. Those results only apply to that kind of heat. And in that kind of heat, the Core Ocean T38 420 doesn't perform particularly overwhelming. Max performance is still good, it's still quite good, but Noise 2 performance just ain't it. And that can change once we turn up the heat, but I'm just not sure until I have tested it. But let's now take a closer look at the AIO itself. Inside the still very eco-friendly box, and yeah, I, I still like it. Anyway, inside this box we will get the AIO itself with the fan separately packaged. Then we got the big bag of mounting hardware for every LGA 1150, 12, 1700 and 2066, or AM4 and AM5. Before we continue, let's take a look at how to mount this thing and it is still using the same mechanic, it's it's horrible. It works, but it's horrible. To get it going on an Intel LGA 1700 socket, we first need to take the LGA 1700 brackets and then cramp them onto the water block pump combo, which feels amazing. From there, we need to take the Intel backplate and position the holes so that they align with the LGA 1700 mounting holes. Now we can prepare the screws, so what I like to do is position them on their heads, then add the spring, then add the washer and then repeat the whole damn thing four times. From there, take the whole thing and screw it down. And yes, because it is mounted in a way without any protection, like for example a spacer, you absolutely do need to, or you always need to do a cross pattern, but in here also do not use an electric screwdriver, a nice cross pattern and then slowly turn by turn until you are done. Over on AMD it's going to be just as fun. First we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and then we can clamp in the AMD mounting plates, which again it's such a fun thing to do. Then we can prepare the screws, but uh, don't be too quick because we first need to add the spring, then the 2mm plastic washer and then the 0.5mm washer because that just makes sense and then do everything four times, and from there, screw in the water block pump combo. And just as it was for the 360 version, 
Installing this in an upright position is flat out impossible. Just don't do it. The tension on the tubes is just too big and you are going to have a extremely hard time. So either do it outside of the case or put it on the back. Otherwise, God help you. Back to the air. Yo, the tubes it comes with are still 400 mm long and sleeved and adjustable at the water block. And this time 400 millimeters is definitely not long enough for a 420 mm IO. It's just not enough to mount it in the front with the tubes down. It's kind of ridiculous. Way too short. This is basically just usable in the top or with the tubes up. So no, way too short and they feel still feel dirt cheap. Just like for the Ocean 360 they do not feel particularly good. But let's now take a closer look at the water block pump combo because that one still has the not so much core feature of being ARGB driven. Yes, we still have that thin line going all around it with a little triangle, everything controllable over a three pin ARGB connector, while the pump with a big ass copper block underneath still has its four pin PVM connector. And yes, the ARGB connector does have a little splitter in case you want to attach more ARGB devices to it. As mentioned in the beginning, the fans used on here are now the 2000 RPM quick Alpha Cool Core 140mm fans. Very good for the price, just like the 120mm version, but their noise to performance still ain't it. Sure, it's a bit better, but still very far away from good. So where do we stand with the 420mm version? Build quality wise, installation and everything else in this category is still the same as it was for the 360 version. It's nothing special, but the 38mm thick radiator is kind of cool, though you need to keep that in mind if you are planning your build, because just like for every Arctic liquid freezer, it's 38 millimeters plus 25 for the fan, so keep that in mind if you have that kind of space. But other than that, this thing is still freaking brutal. The tubes are really not that nice to work with, but the whole thing does the job in a brutal way. It's a 420 millimeter AIO, and it's basically nothing more, though the ARGB looks kinda nice. Simple, but nice. On the performance side, sure, it's better than the 360, but it's still miles away from a liquid freezer 420, and it's still beaten by quite a few 360s, especially in noise to performance, which is kinda sad. But what about the price? Well, this time it's 94 0.36 and unlike the 360 this time we have nothing above the 420 that costs less than a 110 euro so although the 360 didn't win the 420 definitely got the price to performance crown which it's a crown but it's still not for everybody due to its quite bad noise to performance ratio this is only a good option for people that are really just caring about max performance per buck or people who have their PC out of the room and thus they do just don't care about the noise, like servers. But okay, this should be it for AlphaCool and their Core Ocean T38 in 420mm. On a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get some more of that fancy Febreze air lotion. Because last time I only got a single bottle and I had to stop after reducing the temperature by 2 degrees and I'm sure I can squeeze out a tiny bit more. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Alpha Cool Core Ocean T38 in 360mm. It's not quite as good as this one, but it's still really interesting. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.